I know a lot of people who complain of outer elbow pain, and they commonly refer to it as lateral epicondylitis. But today what we're going to be talking about is the actual diagnosis that most climbers experience of lateral epicondylalgia. Alright, so why am I using the term lateral epicondylalgia? Well, because most of the time when we experience this outer elbow pain, it's not just some like really acute sudden injury. And that's more often what the itis is referring to in lateral epicondyl itis. So the itis is that acute inflammation. It may be if you really just have a sudden injury at that elbow, whereas most of the time with climbing, this is something that develops over time. So the reason why that's important is because over time, your tissue is gonna heal improperly and it's gonna be disorganized. So that's what really kind of leads to this development of that lateral elbow pain, is that disorganization of the healing tissue. The mechanism and the risk factors to this, obviously climbing is part of it, and if you're climbing too much, not resting, you don't have enough strength in your extensor compartment, uh, so in the outside part of the elbow, or if you're not doing any cross training, those are some risk factors. But the day-to-day -day stuff that they've shown in the research is if you do like a repetitive task for more than two hours on a daily basis, or if your job or your work requires you to lift more than like 20 kilograms on a consistent basis. So those are some of the risk factors that we look at to developing this lateral elbow pain. All right, so the signs and symptoms are pretty obvious. It's gonna be pain along the outside aspect of the elbow or the lateral epicondyle. So if you look right at the crease of your elbow, going to the outside, that's what we're talking about here. That's different than if you're experiencing pain or discomfort on the inside of the elbow, which we do also have a video on. So these symptoms will usually be provoked by like extension of the wrist or overextending and flexing the wrist. Now, one of the things that we have to differentiate with this that's really important is radial nerve entrapment because we can get the radial nerve entrapped in the outer aspect of the elbow. So we'll look at um, a differentiating test for that as well to make sure that you don't have a nerve elbow and indeed it is a muscle or a tendon issue. Okay, so how do we test for this? We're gonna go through a few tests starting from some of the more subtle, gentle tests to a little more aggressive to see if we can irritate this. Now we always wanna check and compare the unaffected side compared to the side that's bothering you. So the first one we do is gonna be mill. So that's just gonna involve full extension or straightening of the elbow and then bending in the wrist. If you have pain in that similar area, that is a positive provocation test. Next, we're gonna go into the Cozen's test. So again, elbow extended or fully straight, the wrist comes up and then you're resisting that motion. Now it's easier to have someone else help you with this, but you can do this on your own. Just make sure you don't bend your elbow when you go to do this test. You wanna make sure that it is straight. Next, we go into our extensor digitorum test. So we wanna actually go to our, our middle finger. So if you can, you wanna keep your arms straight again and you're gonna apply that direct pressure resisting at the middle finger this time. Those are all pain provocation testing. So if you have pain with it, that's considered a positive. Now again, you wanna compare it to the other side because if both are like a little painful, that might just be your baseline or your norm. If one side is clearly more uncomfortable than the other, those are pain provocation tests. Now, a final one we can look at, but usually have to have more equipment, is you wanna grip something. So it might be like um, a bar, a PVC pipe, anything that's a normal grip. It can't just be a, a pen or a Sharpie that's not quite wide enough. You wanna grip it and, and see if that produces your pain as well, or if you feel weakness. If you feel weaker on one side or the other, that may be a protective mechanism that your body doesn't want to produce as much strength, and that's another positive sign. Now, so we've looked at some to see if it is a muscle or a tendon issue on the outside. I mentioned earlier we want to rule out that radial nerve. So the radial nerve test that we do for this, you have to be careful with, and you want to go slowly with it because you don't want to stretch the nerve out if it is irritated. But what you do with that is you bring your arm down to your side and slightly behind you. You notice it's not touching my side. It is sticking a little bit away. Then I'm going to make a fist and bring my wrist back behind me. If you feel symptoms in the same aspect and it reproduces your familiar symptoms, 
Don't go any further. That is a positive. You may have a radial nerve involvement rather than just that elbow pain. The next step would be to reach down towards the ground. Again, if you feel reproduction of your symptoms, that's a positive. Don't go further. The final stage is going to be to bring your head away. So this is where you're really going to be stretching that nerve. If you feel a reproduction of your symptoms, bring your head back to the other side. If you feel a reduction of your symptoms, that's a positive sign for a radial nerve entrapment. Now, if you had positives to basically everything, there's a chance you have both going on, or you may have like actual inflammation at the elbow causing an entrapment, but also a muscle issue, definitely see a specialist so they can be really specific with these tests and help guide you on your path to recovery. So the reason we talk about this radial nerve entrapment as being an important factor to look at with our um, lateral epicondylalgia is because sometimes like when we start climbing, we may overdevelop these muscles and our body hasn't really adjusted to it. Because we do have, with any time we grip and we extend, we get those extensor muscle groups stronger, and the radial nerve runs underneath some of those muscles. So if those muscles haven't been stretched at all, but they're getting stronger and tighter, you can get that entrapment, and that will produce either local pain right at the elbow, or it can produce pain going down into your wrist, maybe even into your thumb and that can cause more issues down the road if you don't correct that. You may start to notice that even just doing pull-ups or any other position, so we wanna make sure that we don't have that radial nerve entrapment as well. So how do we treat this? I know that's what you guys are all sticking around for, is discovering like what kind of forms of treatment do we have? Well again, going from kind of more gentle and conservative to more aggressive, first we have to look at like our activity modification. So if, if you met that earlier criteria of like your job involves like really repetitive movements or if you're lifting a lot of heavy stuff, you have to look at where you can modify because you may have just like overloaded the tissue too quickly and you need to cut back a little bit, whether that's cutting your training sessions down a little bit, doing some cross training, modify your activity. What are you missing versus what are you doing too much of? Okay, the second kind of conservative treatment that we can do is just starting to mobilize your own tissue. So get some oil or whatnot that you can apply over that area and do some like self-massage to the area. If you have like an instrument to do that massage with, whether that's a tool or just like the blunt edge of a butter knife, that's great. Work over that effective tissue. Be careful not to just put pressure on the bone. That's not gonna do you any good. You may need to get close to it because obviously the tendon attaches to the bone, but don't just grind down on your bone. You can also work with some braces. Some people find like if they use a brace that compresses that area, that can be really helpful. Particularly if you're one of those people who have a really repetitive job, bracing can help while you're in that healing phase. And then finally, and probably most importantly, you need to start working on some eccentric strengthening. So remember that eccentric strengthening is loading of the tissue and working on that load while the tissue is lengthening, okay? So we talk about this in some of our other videos. Check out the wrist stability strengthening video for examples. But for this in particular, we really wanna work on the extension. So you can use a TheraBand, a flex bar, you can use free weights, or as you progress through them, you can do that mecha that's in the other video of the reverse curl to really work all those different muscle groups. But that's what you need to start working on. Those eccentrics should be done in the initial stages with about three sets of 15 repetitions over a five second period. Now the research kind of varies. They haven't really decided really specifically like if it should be done daily or every other day. I'm always a fan of listen to your body. If you can do it daily but you don't feel sore, that's good. If you feel a little bit of soreness, give yourself a rest day and then do it every other day until you build that strength of the tissue up and can advance with your exercises. So early on in the beginning of the video, we mentioned how this lateral epicondylalgia is an issue of disorganized tissue. So this is where the treatment comes really important. And those two main aspects are gonna be the eccentrics and the tissue mobility. So the eccentrics are gonna to help to organize the tissue and strengthen the tissue as you work on it. The tissue mobility and where that plays a role is it helps to reorganize the tissue as it's healing or as it's going through its remodeling. 
by mobilizing the tissue, whether it be with you know, your hand or with that instrument, you help to lay down the, the tissue in a more organized fashion. While bracing and activity modification are really, it can be helpful, the only way you're gonna reorganize it is through the tissue mobility and the eccentric. So those are super important for this issue. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks again for watching and hit that subscribe button if you liked it. Maybe we'll do the first one, sleeves down. Lateral epicondylalgia. Why does that matter? Not just trying to sound super cool. Lateral epicondylalgia, otherwise known as lateral epicondylitis, but different things. <laughs> Crushed it. I know a lot of climbers who experience pain and discomfort on the outside of the shoulder. <laughs> so I to the elbow. <laughs> that connective tissue in a way that's gonna organize and help super exceed, super exceed. What are words? Got your third finger. You got your grip strength testing. Wah! 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 <laughs> but the algae the aspect of it, we're more referring to... Uh, where should I cut into it? Uh, the beginning. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs>